Several 2024 hopefuls will appear at the Faith and Freedom Coalition's annual gathering in Washington. Chair of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, Ralph Reed, joins us now. Ralph, thanks for being here at the table. So this is a a regular occurrence for you over the past decade or so. You're convening the candidates. Mm -hmm. They're all coming, and they want to appeal to religious voters. Is this all about Trump, or do you think there's actually some political oxygen out there among this coalition to hear out some alternatives? You know, I think both are true at once. I think Donald Trump is uh, one of the most formidable, if not the strongest, front runner at this point in the process that I've seen in my career. And I worked for George W. Bush in 99 and 2000, so I know a little bit about that. And he's in a very, very strong position. And he should be, because he's the first former president to seek his party's presidential nomination since Teddy Roosevelt did it 110 years ago. So this is pretty historic. But there's a corollary truth and reality that is somewhat contradictory. And that is, this is going to be a highly fluid process. It's going to be very competitive, very hard fought. I think Ron DeSantis at a minimum and probably Tim Scott, Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, maybe potentially several others are going to be well-funded enough and have appealing candidacies that will make them a factor in those early primary states. And if somebody were able to break off right tackle and win one of those first three states, this race would change overnight. Well, a lot of the attention's on Iowa, because if you're going to win over religious right. voters and eat into Trump's base, you have to do it in Iowa versus That's right. South Carolina is a little bit later in the calendar. There's been a lot of talk, you've heard it, from people like former Vice President Mike Pence, Trump's own former VP, who says that Trump's not conservative enough on abortion. Is this a real criticism of Trump that's gaining traction on the right? I I think it's certainly going to be litigated in the course of the campaign. You know, Mike Pence has staked out a position in favor of a pain-capable federal bill that would ban abortion at 15 weeks. Uh, We support that. That's our position. Uh, Donald Trump hasn't committed to that. I don't think Ron DeSantis is committed to that. So it's going to be litigated. It's going to be talked about. But I think Trump is going to have a case to make, too. You know, I mean, he's the one who appointed the three Supreme Court justices and Roe v. Wade was overturned because of his actions. He was the most pro-life president in history. He defunded Planned Parenthood. He was the first president to speak to the March for Life. And, you know, (laughs) Trump is not known to be a shrinking violet. So I think if they come back to him, if they attack him on that, I think he'll come back very forcefully And then it'll be up to the voters to decide. But I'm glad we're going to have that conversation because honestly, Bob, since the Dobbs decision, I don't think the Republican Party, its campaigns or its candidates have quite found their sea legs yet. I think they're still trying to figure out the message. Well, they almost seemed like they were in shock when it happened. And a year later, when I talked to campaigns across the board, right, left or center inside the GOP, they still seem to be adjusting to this. I agree. Yeah. And I I think, I don't know why it caught them so flat-footed. And I think they mistakenly thought if we could just talk about inflation and gas prices and pretend that that didn't happen. I mean, abortion in a lot of these battleground states was right at the number one or two issue and why voters were voting the way they were. You cannot stick your head in the sand and ignore this. You've got to not only explain your own position and do it confidently and assertively, you've got to pivot to offense and start attacking the Democrats for being the extremists that they are. They want to codify Roe v. Wade into federal law. They want to uh, create a new federal entitlement under Medicaid, repeal the Hyde Amendment, and that would lead to 300,000 abortions a year beyond what we have now. That's an indefensible position. Is the enthusiasm still there among the voters you have been such a, a big part of for really three, four decades now? They've overturned, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. For many conservative voters who are religious, they got what they wanted. Do they still want to show up and have that same fervor on religious issues at the polls? Yeah, absolutely, because what they discovered was that the Dobbs decision was not a moment of triumphalism. It it was not the final victory. It was an intermediate victory that basically gave them a license to go state by state and pass as many laws as they could to protect as many unborn children as they could. So they found out rather quickly, by the way, just like the left did after Roe, 
that this was not a, you know, the court making a decision did not end the discussion. It goes to the states. It just started it. And the state Supreme Courts. That's right. And then w- what I believe is that if you look, 24 states, either just prior to Dobbs or afterwards, have now passed laws protecting unborn children in their mother's wombs. Some at 12 weeks, some at six weeks, some from conception. It's a mix of things, but 24 states have already acted. We believe that by the time we get to the presidential election in 24, that number is going to be 30 to 32 states. If we can get enough states acting, it will create a national consensus, and then we can act at the federal level. You know, some Democrats welcome what you're doing. They're saying you're you're going too far for the country. Well, that's not backed up by the data. 60 to 70 percent of the American people think that there shouldn't be abortion after the first trimester. The debate will continue certainly in the next year ahead of the election. Ralph Reed, we'll be covering your event. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. You bet.